PC Whiz Kid here with something very exciting from AS Rock, the Desk Mini 310. This is basically a bare bones PC that is using the latest from Intel. That's right, we're going to look at all of this more in detail. First things first, I got to tell you, this is missing the CPU, the memory, and storage. Okay, so keep that in mind. You need those three things in order to complete the build. I'm going to show you everything that I did here to get it up and running. We're going to look at the specs first. Uh, supports the latest Intel 8th and 9th generation CPUs, as long as it's using the LGA 1151 socket. I'll be using the 9th generation CPU today. And uh, it's using the H310 chipset from Intel that came out last year. You can see right here. Uh, it's a great way to re basically build a small form factor PC. Uh, this is not meant for overclocking. It's not meant for enthusiast PCs with separate graphics cards. It's meant for you to have uh, and use the integrated graphics that comes with your CPU. So keep that in mind, but it does have support for three monitors, two at a time, of course, because the chipset is meant to be uh, used for two, and uh, it has support for SSD drives, so you can install that at the back of the, uh, of the board, or you can install a micro SD card, or maybe an M.2 SSD, so it's up to you. Like I said, you have a HDMI DP uh, and VGA out, but two displays at a time, okay? Keep that in mind. Um, once you get familiar with all the components and everything that you need that's missing and that you have available, because this does come with Wi-Fi, keep that in mind. It's a bare bones PC, the size of a power supply, of a desktop power supply roughly, but it comes with the Wi-Fi M.2 card on there in the box along with the manuals, SATA cables, the uh, drivers, um, a VESA mount, and uh, an additional adapter for USB uh, 2.0 on, on, uh, on the case. So again, everything is documented very nicely. This isn't uh, complicated. It's not uh, hard as long as you do it nice and slow and go through an order in, in which you know I did, and I'll show you the order that I did here for you to get an idea on how to put one of these together yourself. Um, the neat little thing about it, it comes with a VESA mount. Uh, you can see the holes there on the side. And if you're wondering what that is, I'm going to show you that in a second. Here's the front of the case where the power button, the LEDs are. The USB 3.0 and Type-C are at the front of the case. And the VESA mount um, is on the side. It's optional, of course. You don't have to use this. But if you do use it, it has basically the screws and everything that you need to install that hardware onto it and then from there you can attach this at the back of your monitor for example and have an all-in-one PC or maybe have one of those mounted arms that you can have it swivel across or anything that has a VESA compatible uh, mount you can install that on. The um, two antennas here I installed them already just so you could see how it would look um, you know and point them in the direction that you want usually up and at the back you've got your display port HDMI VGA you've got your USB 3.0 and 2.0 and of course you've got your Ethernet plug as well. So everything nicely laid out there. Uh, you can see I have the Intel box fan installed in there. That means that uh, this hardware packs a punch because you can actually get a lot of performance out of this if you think about it and, uh, and plan it. So before you build, get familiar with what are the limitations, what can you do with this. 32 um, uh, gigs of, of RAM is the max on there. I'll be installing 16 gigs of that SO DIMM uh, size memory in there. The CPU that we'll be using today is the ninth generation Intel Core i5-9400 um, processor, the Coffee Lake uh, branded one here that you can see, 65 watts maximum. Don't go over that. Okay, remember we're using the Intel Box um, CPU cooler on here, so it's not meant for overclocking, but we do need good overclocking on um, cooling, I should say. Uh, the Kingston memory that we have here uh, is more than enough, more than adequate, running at 2400 MHz CL17 timings and the Plextor SSD that I have actually installed the standard SSD on the bottom and attached one of these cables that you see there to it. Follow the instructions in the manual to attach it onto the board through this hole, this opening here on that board. Then plugged in the uh, Intel box fan, the height is just perfect. And uh, the CPU fan headers, there's two of them. I plugged in the four pin power connector there for the fan and, uh, and basically away you go. Now the next step here 
is to install your M.2 Wi-Fi card that it came with so that we can get the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth going. Install that, slide it into place, put the screw on, and attach the two little tiny cables. Okay, be very careful with these cables. Attach those two right there, and then once those are clipped on, then you can uh, decide to install an M.2 SSD like I did here, or not, and just use a regular SSD, it's up to you, and attach the two uh, antennas uh, as well at the back. There's two holes there that you can make two holes and then just slide it and uh, attach it and screw the antennas in appropriately. So here at the top of the case, optional, you can install also additional um, USB connectors. I mean, you don't have to install those, like I said, but I, I went ahead and, and installed it anyway so, so that it's there. Uh, but uh, again, once you've planned it, decided how you want it, um, you can go ahead and slide it in. This is how it looks like on the inside before you slide it in. Uh, make sure that all the cables are, um, you know, not um, pinched anywhere. They're not attached um, uh, to something that they shouldn't be uh, or hitting the fan, for example. And then once everything is uh, open, you can just slide it into place, attach the four screws at the back, and away you go. That's pretty much it. Uh, power it on, you'll see the LED go on, install your favorite operating system in there, and now I'm going to do some benchmarks, right? Because that's what we're uh, here to look at using the Intel uh, Core i5-9400. You can see six cores, six threads. It's not a hyper-threaded, so it's not six cores, 12 threads. It's six core, six threads, and um, low power usage, again, 65 watts max, um, the voltage is fluctuating there. Again, all I'm doing is recording the screen and uh, the megahertz, the core speed is fluctuating and it can go all the way up to 3.9 gigahertz. In my case, I've seen it go up to 3.9 all six cores and uh, and then come back down depending on, on usage. Uh, and uh, temperature readings are, are pretty good as well. Um, I'll show you that in just a moment. The board is using the ASRock uh, motherboard, of course, uh, with the H. Uh, 310 chipset on there and uh, like I said this is a very tiny board so they're really packing a lot into this STX uh, form factor uh, here are the specs of that board by the way and the bias date so you know exactly what I'm using Kingston memory well we're using that uh, 2400 megahertz memory at the CL17 timings as you can see right there and the uh, graphics well we don't install a separate graphics card in here just so you know because it's built in on the GPU uh, the, the GPU and the CPU are together and the same on the same die so uh, there is no additional slot for a graphics card you just basically have to use the one that comes with your CPU in this case it's the uh, Intel UHD graphics 630 okay that's the uh, GPU that uh, comes with this uh, processor uh, together and it shares the memory of course that I have installed of the 16 gigs and uh, it supports DDR4 of course which is what I have installed and those are the GPU clock memory clock and the boost clock in case you're wondering about that now when it comes to temperatures one is going to affect the other so even though the GPU might be on idle it's still going to heat up the processor in general so 35 degrees uh, Celsius on idle roughly okay and on full load which you probably would never do on this system but it would go all the way up to 70 degrees Celsius at 100 percent load all six cores here are some more accurate readings when it comes to wattage usage depending on what you're doing on the use case whether you're playing a YouTube video uh, playing Fortnite or uh, running prime 95 at full load which is what I did a second ago so if you were to play uh, Fortnite you know these are the recommended settings don't go any higher than that so that way you can get anywhere from 20 to 30 frames per second and things can be smooth online um, that's pretty much the standard for any game that you play at 1080p with this machine uh, 3d mark is showing me the night raid results here and it compared it to other systems with similar GPUs I guess if you want to see how it compares to other systems you can uh, get a feel for it right there especially the previous generation uh, GPU PC mark 10, which gives you a overall well-rounded score of 4291 is what it gave me came pretty close to uh, a gaming PC as you can see here uh, an Intel Core i5 4590 with a GTX 970 Wow that's pretty uh, darn good for for this type of uh, system so it's it's more about the CPU than anything else the CPU I mean obviously the SSD is super fast but the the, the processor here is really the uh, the winner um, the the Intel H310 chipset 
you know, plays plays a part as well, but it's more more about the CPU here that is really uh, shining and helping boost performance, as you can see right here when it compares to other processors, how well this is doing. Um, and again, here is a ranking on my score compared to other processors. When it comes to 2D graphics, this is a killer on 2D graphics. It outperforms practically every graphics card here that I've uh, tested against. You can see how well this scored um, in comparison when it comes to 2D graphics. Hands down, you're going to have a great experience. 3D graphics, maybe not so much. Again, this is not meant for, for 3D gaming, but uh, you can get anywhere from 20 to 30 frames per second like I showed you a second ago. So that's why you're getting these scores uh, almost five star ratings for everything except for the 3D, which makes perfect sense. Um, and again, small form factor PC, home office, maybe a NAS drive, multimedia system, you know, this is great for that. You're going to get terrific performance. Not necessarily for rendering, but Cinebench uh, R13, just to humor you guys on the uh, results here compared to a uh, Intel Core i5 7400, it got a huge boost with the ninth generation compared to that. ADA 64, you can see here the uh, memory readings that I got on the read-write copy, the latency, and the CPU results obviously are amazing. Pause the screen at any time if you want to look at this more in detail and how it compared to other uh, systems when it pushed the bandwidth there back and forth on those megs per second. Terrific results again, running it at uh, basically 3.9 gigahertz is what it was forcing the CPU to run at these uh, at these results is just amazing. CPU Z, uh, the benchmark here, you can see here how this system performed. 471 was the score that I got compared to uh, an Intel Core i5 6600K or a 6700K, for example. So right around that mark on the single core um, result, not the multi-threaded uh, result. If I switch over to the multi-threaded results, I was actually quite impressed as well. Um, considering that this is not a hyper-threaded CPU, right? It's not six cores, 12 threads, it's just six cores, six threads, straightforward. And um, it's more than enough for a, for a lot of uh, applications, right? So here again is how it performed my score compared to those other previous generation Intel Core i5 CPUs, terrific results. Hands down, you know, I think ASRock uh, kicked this out of the ballpark and uh, it was just an amazing uh, uh, system to, to um, benchmark play around with, build, put together, and test. I tell you, if you're looking to build something like this, easy. I'll add the links below on the parts. You can go ahead and play around with it and see what you can build uh, using the ASRock Desk Mini 310. I'd like to thank ASRock for providing it. Comment below, let me know what you think, and again, thank you for watching.